Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer Termel, and this post is about a recent idea that happened in Britain in March when a coalition of groups and unions and members of parliament started demanding that they use the post office as a people's bank. Now, are they going to make maximum use of it, or are they going to screw it up? Let's see. Government Mole's People's Bank, BBC News. Telegraph in B in by Robert Winnett. Post office could be turned into new people's bank. And in the Independent UK, Mandelson backs people's bank plans. And in the mirror, people's bank could save the post office from privatization claims. The Yorkshire Post call for Royal Mail to run a people's bank. And unions join voices for a people's bank. And post office should evolve into people's bank, says coalition. Now don't forget, I've spoken before about using the post office as some kind of a bank, but let's see what they got in mind here. And Tuesday, 17th, 17th of March, 2009, writes Hazel Cottrell from consumerchoices.co.uk. MPs, trade unions, and small businesses have clubbed together to argue for a new type of local people's bank to be introduced at post offices across Britain. A major campaign to create a people's bank at the post office, www.postoffice.co.uk, has been launched today. Under the proposed plans, 11,500 existing post office branches would offer a full range of banking services to those most in need, but not credit, I bet. The new post office People's Bank would serve those who have been denied services from high street lenders and would provide a stable source of finance for the thousands of small businesses that are struggling to get loans from traditional banks. Well, where are they going to get this finance from is the question. Are they going to be looking for old chips like a piggy bank or new chips like a casino bank? The campaign is being backed by a coalition of trade unions, small businesses, MPs from all parties and pressure groups. Campaigners say the bank would be backed by government funds. Ah, it's going to be a piggy bank. And any profits, a casino bank doesn't need funds, right? It issues new chips in exchange for collateral. Only a piggy bank needs funds to lend in exchange for collateral. Campaigners say the bank would be backed by government funds and any profits would be reinvested in local communities and help finance banking services for small businesses. Aha, the Sparta effect. The post office is a trusted national institution. So to make it the base for a new type of bank that really is there to serve those in need certainly makes sense to me. Well done. Well, I went to maybe 50 different sites, probably more, and I left the following message. This is a great idea. It exhibits the Sparta effect. Visiting Sparta, you deposited gold or silver with the city bank, got clay tokens, stamps maybe in this case, spendable in town, and cashed out when leaving town. Sparta benefited of the interest while trading went on normally with the clay chips. If everyone bought stamps for all their cash, the state would benefit of the interest on the cash, while trading would go on normally with the stamp tokens. If you peg your local stamp currency to the time standard of money, how many stamp pounds per hour average labor, hours earned locally can be spent globally. In 1999, I paid for 39 nights out of 40 in Europe with an IOU for a night back in Canada worth five hours. Internet time-based systems are intertrading globally. I did. See my banking systems engineering analysis at YouTube King of the Poppers. And I sent my message to all these places. Now, this must have sounded really foreign to them because no one was suggesting people go and buy in with all their cash to get stamps that they would use as an alternate currency like Berkshires or Toronto dollars or Calgary dollars. All those systems you've been hearing about where people go and buy in and get a community currency. And in the meantime, the community earns the interest, the Sparta effect. So in this case they wouldn't even earn the interest on the total amount because they'd probably have to pay interest to the depositors after charging the borrowers some interest because they're going to operate like a piggy bank, 
that charges interest. So going nowhere because they have to have people with money to deposit to get started. And after the crash, nobody's got any money. So what's the use of opening piggy banks all over the country when no one's got any money to put in them? You have to start casino banks and that, or give them stamps in exchange as a local currency so that currency functions that they're treasuring right now, I got money to buy this, well, you're still going to have a new kind of money to buy the same thing. So you don't mind parting with your federal cash so the government can get interest and pay down its debts. So I don't know if anybody caught on in Britain about the idea of using it to get the full value of the interest as opposed to just running a piggy bank with no depositors, but I haven't heard any more news, so I guess it's going nowhere for that reason.